much for these eight minutes to present uh, all the nice things about this project and uh, spare you with all the difficulties and problems you actually have when uh, doing such a huge project on the impact of gender diversity uh, in uh, research groups. I'm working at the Gentic um, Research Group at the IN3 and um, Let's go. I want to just give you some key ideas and uh, concepts of uh, diversity research to set a little bit the uh, stage, what this is about. And it's basically about uh, the new science of building great teams. So uh, what it is, what is it that makes okay. teams perform okay. well and excel? And this is not only an interest, of course, in research. It's also an interest uh, on in the industry where more, more and more work is happening in a collaborative uh, fashion. Um, this is due to the fact that knowledge is more and more uh, uh, specialized and as we heard just uh, our rector, of course, if you want to do uh, approach certain problems in a holistic manner, you need to integrate this knowledge again in order to really bring it to bear on, on the problem. So knowledge is spe specialized in, in specific niches and we need to integrate this so people need to work together. This is the science of uh, building great teams. If we look at Google, Google, of course, wants to do this as well. And actually, this is a, a nice story because it is a shortcut to uh, much of the research in diversity uh, over the past uh, years. Because what they did at Google is they wanted to know with all the people they have working there, uh, well, what makes great teams. And uh, they couldn't find any pattern uh, looking at uh, different configurations of age, gender, educational background. There was not a clear pattern. And this actually reflects the research over the past decades as well, where I say the, the surface level diversity effects, it's not a, a, a consistent correlation really to a specific outcome. So other factors are in fact uh, more important, such as psychological safety in a group. So if you have a group where people are really can speak up, they're not afraid to voice the difference, uh, then actually uh, those groups perform better. So what do we know actually from uh, the research? Why do some teams excel and answer? And it's actually basically a configuration of two things. On the one hand, you have a structural perspective where it says you need diverse assets for your team. So diverse knowledge, diverse educational background, and the bigger up to a certain degree your team is, the better, because there's more diversity in the resources your team have. But then it's not enough to just have those resources, you actually have to work with the other person. So and that's where it comes in all the things about you know, social relations, how well you trust your other, how open you are uh, to share the information you really have. So it's a combination of those two things. You need diverse assets and you need a good working climate, a good team climate, in order to really work with the other people, you know, on uh, well the problem or topic you're working on. And this is uh, one good example for this is uh, this publication by David Stark and others, a game changer, where they looked at video game development and they actually found what they called a structural fold. Structural folds are people that are part of different groups, so they make like a bridge. But at the same time, they are very well established in each of these groups. So they, they, they are trusted members of each of the groups, so they can make a bridge between the diverse knowledge they have, but at the same time, they're able to really work with this diversity and generate something new. These are the two more or less uh, perspectives in this field. Now, what's the role of gender diversity in this, really? So there are also two basic points to make. This is a publication that was done in 2010 on the evidence of a collective intelligence factor in human groups. And in a laboratory experiment, they actually showed that those groups performed better where they had a more equal distribution of men and women. And they linked this to the fact that actually in those groups, the sharing and turn taking uh, was better distributed. Everybody could contribute in a better way, which in the end 
performed the overall, improved the overall performance of the group. So it says like if you have a more equally distributed team, it will perform better. The other thing is uh, this presentation, or you can also think about this recent movie, Hidden Figures. You know, these mathematicians working at NASA, which had a really hard time to be recognized in their cap capacity and their knowledge. And it's the same here. This is from uh, economics, and it actually says that uh, single, uh, if men and women share publications in economics, uh, women get less promoted because in case of doubt, uh, the credit is allocated to the man. And this is, can be true because um, the order of the authors is alphabetically, and so they don't know who's the main contributor of this paper. And in the end, you can't tell if it's the men or the women of the team. So actually in economics, the conclusion is, if you are a woman, you're better off if you publish on your own than with uh, collaborators. So there's a bias against women uh, in what they know and what they, um, in, the, in their capacities, basically. There's a bias against women in, in research in certain disciplines. Okay, so to give you a little bit of what we do in the JEDI project. So this is a project that is financed by the Horizon 2020 um, program. And we are now almost two years in the project. There are people participating from Spain. We are the coordinators here then from Germany and from Sweden and uh, the UK. And we are looking at basically, well, how does gender diversity really affect research teams? And what we do is on the one hand, we did eight, eight case studies with these research groups here in, the U in, in Spain and in the UK, where we did semi-structured interviews. And we also tested those uh, sociometric badges which basically let you monitor, it's, it's, it's a sensor device, which lets you monitor the interaction that's going on between the people in the research groups in terms of their interactions, how much they contribute in terms of speech and also in their nonverbal body language. Currently, we are doing the cross-country survey of research groups in these countries, Sweden, Germany, Lithuania, Spain, and the UK in these two fields. And this is uh, very challenging because we need to get up to 78% response rate per team. So uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but the actual value, I think, what is the unique contribution that uh, JEDI can do in this sense? It's on the one hand, usually when you look at these uh, studies, diversity studies in bibliometric studies, uh, you look at uh, simply, uh, simply the, the pattern of authors. So you take the names of the authors and you assign a gender, men and women, and then you study what's the, is there any difference in impact. So it's basically only author studies, or you get on the other hand uh, studies which look at team variables like team climate, psychological safety, power, the social demographic di distribution, but they don't then link it to an objective performance measure, like in the bibliometric studies. So this is one of the few studies which tries to do both, like get a questionnaire on a group level and then link it to some of the existing uh, objective performance measures like publications and patents. And uh, well, that's gonna be from September onwards. Thank you. <laughs>